Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a big book haul. So in my last book haul I said that was the biggest book haul I've ever done and I've topped it. I've hauled in more books this haul than in the previous haul. We've got 68 books to talk about today. Let's get right down to the books. Christmas happened since the last haul, so some of these are going to be Christmas presents, and Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb is a Christmas present from my good writerly buddy Taylor, so thank you so much Tay Tay for this book, I'm really excited to read Assassin's Apprentice, it's a fantasy book and people on booktube love Robin Hobb's writing, and I've just been meaning to try one of her fantasy books for myself. I think this is where to start. She's got several series, but people did say that this is the best place to start. The next book is one that I got for myself, and that is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a romance book, and it's following these two authors who are polar opposites, and I think they uh, strike a deal to force themselves out of their creative writing zones and to swap genres and it just sounds really really cute. I've heard such good things about Emily Henry from Emma Tobias whose channel I really really love and I've been meaning to get into reading more romance that is not by Alexis Hall because I just read so much of his romance books so I hope that this will be a good one. Yes, excited to read it. For Christmas I got two books by Beth O'Leary. One of them is from Abby from Abby of Pelennor and the other one is from Mary from Mary Among Stories so thank you to both of you for sending me these two books for Christmas and they both sound like they're going to be very nice contemporary books with romance in them. The flat share is about these people who share a flat but one person is in it during the day and the other person is in it during the night and they kind of have notes back and forth where they communicate and I think a romance is going to happen between them two. And then the switch is where there's these two families that live next to each other and they decide to like a person from each family switch their lives. So that sounds really intriguing as well and I've just heard good things about both of them. So I was not in the UK during the massive Boxing Day sales but there were some sales online so I did get a few books in hardcover on their sale online and one of them is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is a fantasy book that I've just heard so many good things about. I know it's got Asian mythology woven into it and it has a beautiful cover and it has positive reviews and that is the reason why I decided to pick it up. I hope it's going to be good. I've been in the mood for young adult and adult fantasy once again since the year has started, so that is promising. For Christmas from Lena, from Lena Reads, I was gifted Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Thank you so much, Lena. This book is absolutely gorgeous and I'm so excited to read this because I do love a good Greek mythology retelling and this one we're following Ariadne, who you might know because of the spider story. It sounds feminist focused and I know it got a lot of hype when it came out, so I'm gonna try it for myself. My sister April is also a reader. In fact, all of my sisters are readers, but April was doing a big clean out and unhauling some books. So I got some books from her unhaul. And one that I got from her unhaul was The Other Black Girl by Zakia Dahlia Harris. And this one is a thriller that's set in a publishing house where a second black person is hired within this publishing house but there is something about this other girl and April was very very disappointed in this she was really looking forward to it as were we both we were both talking about how excited we were for it then she read it and she was utterly disappointed so I'm looking forward to reading it so I can discuss it with her I don't actually have higher hopes for it, I think I might find it a bit underwhelming as well but I still want to read it because I was excited for it and I want to discuss it with my sister. Speaking of hauling from unhauls, Hannah from Lidet M unhauled The Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendricks so I'm hauling it in from her unhaul and this one is about this group of final girls, they were all final girls within their own situation. And eventually someone starts killing them all off one by one. 
and it's about that and it sounds like it's going to be interesting i hope i will like it i've seen quite a few mixed reviews for this one some people are very disappointed by it but i have enjoyed grady hendrix in the past and i hope this will be another one where i will enjoy it and fall on the camp of people who did enjoy it in the end okay so now we have some limited edition classics from wordsworth that i got for myself as a christmas present to myself and I really love these editions and I think they're really gorgeous. So the first one I have is this really nice edition of Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Montgomery. And I was thinking, why is this book so thick? When I was filming this just now and I flipped through it and I see that it's Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea, which is the second book. So now I've also got the second one and can continue reading the series, which I'm very excited to do because I read Anne of Green Gables in December and absolutely loved it. It follows this young girl who is an orphan and she gets adopted by the Cuthberts and it's just about what happens when she's integrated into this new family. It's really good and this is a stunning edition. I do have a second-hand copy of this that I got in a second-hand shop, but I'm going to be donating that one and keeping this one. I also got a copy of Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott, which is a classic I've already read. I read this one when I was much younger. It follows these four sisters and it's about them. It's really, really sweet. And this is just a beautifully wintry, gorgeous edition. I haven't had a copy on my shelves of this ever because when I first read it, it was from the library. So I'm very glad that I have one to put on my shelves now. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This one has all of the winter vibes and it's absolutely gorgeous. I recently unhauled the copies of this and the next ones I'm going to show you because I got these beautiful editions and they're much prettier and I don't need the other ones on my shelves. So very happy to have this one in my collection. It's a really good story. Then we have A Little Prince, The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint Superi. I'm sorry, I'm not French, so I'm probably not pronouncing his last name correctly, but The Little Prince is a lovely all age story that's very short, but is so cute and I really recommend it. Very happy to have this beautiful edition. This is the most stunning edition of it I've ever seen. And then the actual classic that I was looking for a nice edition of when I stumbled across this beautiful collection was The Secret Garden. And this is a very nice edition of it. I was looking for a nice edition. I read this one when I was younger and I've since reread it. It's do it has got its problems. It's got some ableism in it, but it's got beautiful nature descriptions and it's got a lot of nostalgia for me because I read this one when I was younger. Then. For for Christmas from my friend Serena from A Wandering Mind who has a great booktube channel. She got me I Wish You All The Best by Mason Diva. This is a young adult contemporary novel which I've really been enjoying that genre lately so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It's been on my radar ever since it came out and I think it's got a non-binary character in this one which is one of the reasons why I wanted to read it to see that representation back when it first came out but still very happy to see that representation today and I think it's going to be a good one. I've heard lots of good things about it. From Chelsea, from Chelsea Zhao, she sent me a collection of books for Christmas which was just so nice of her, thank you. And she sent me the Area X trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. The first one in the series is Annihilation, then the second one is Acceptance, and the third one is Authority. I read Annihilation a few years ago and I absolutely loved it. It's a very strange, weird, short book, but it was really, really good and it just intrigued me from beginning to end. And last year, at the end of 2021, I just about watched the film adaption, which I loved as well. It does some things differently, but it keeps the nature of the book the same. And I thought it was just a fantastic film. Very well done. So edgy and creepy and strange. And after watching the film, originally I decided I wasn't going to finish off the trilogy because I hadn't heard that good things about the sequels. But after the film, I'm so invested and I want to know more. So I shall be reading the rest of the trilogy. This is another one from my writer friend Taylor and that is The Magic Fish by Trung Li Nguyen and this one is a graphic novel which is all about this young boy who wants to come out to his 
mother, I believe, and he doesn't have the words to do so in her language. So he decides to tell some tales and stories in order to bridge that language gap and come out to her. And I've heard so many positive things and even looking at the colour palette, it just looks so beautiful and the artwork looks so nice. So I'm really anticipating this one. So looking forward to reading it. We have Christmas Asaurus and The Winter Witch and Christmas Asaurus and The Naughty List. Both of these are by Tom Fletcher. And this one is a gift from Abby, from Abby of Pelino for Christmas. Thank you once again, Abby. You kind of spoiled me this Christmas. And then this hardback I got from Waterstone Sale. And yes, I have read The Christmas Thesaurus. Those That was one of the Christmas books I read in 2019 Christmas. And I think these are going to be the two that I read in 2022 Christmas. So I'm looking forward to that. They've got a disabled main character who's a wheelchair user. They are middle grade and the first one was so much fun. I absolutely loved it. So I'm looking forward to reading both of these and underneath the dust jacket of this hardcover is an absolutely stunning illustration. So it's beautiful. But then I was sent four books by Lakeisha L Book Nerd on Instagram. We have been good friends since we were both blogging in our early blogging days. So I've known her for so many years and she absolutely spoiled me and sent me four books for my birthday so as of me filming this my birthday has not happened yet because my birthday is on the 29th of january but she said them early thank you so much lakeisha for spoiling me i can't i just people are too nice people are too nice in the book community honestly so the first book that she got me was silver sparrow by chayari jones and this is a book that's by the author of an american marriage i read an american marriage last year and it was a brand new favorite for me i absolutely loved it and i thought it was a fantastic book so even though i don't know anything about silver sparrow i definitely definitely wanted to read it so now i will be able to she also sent me the jumbies by tracy baptist and this is a middle grade book to do with the jumbies it's supposed to be a bit scary a little bit horror filled and i'm just looking forward to it because i do enjoy reading a good middle grade and i do want to try some more creepy middle grade books i think that could be a lot of fun we have uh, the woman of troy by pat barker and this one is the sequel to the silence of the girls i read the silence of the girls a little while back and i really love that book i thought it was so well done and so interesting to think of compared to the song of achilles as a different perspective on the same story and i'm just curious to see how she's going to continue this narrative and focusing on the woman's after the events of what happened in Troy because the aftermath is just something that you don't usually get to see in books so looking forward to that one as well and then last but not least Lakeisha got me Blue is the Warmest Colour by Julie Marrow and this one is a graphic novel that I think I'm going to fly through and we're following a main character who starts to have a crush on a girl and is discovering things about her sexuality that she hadn't known before. Then Lily on Instagram was done hauling some books so I picked some up. The first one I got is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've just been collecting Tiffany D. Jackson books because I'm so sure that I'm going to love them. I think this one is about a girl who goes missing and it was the first one of Tiffany D. Jackson's I'd ever heard about and saw rave reviews for, which is what originally put her on my radar. And then I also got A Quiet Kind of Thunder and Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Barnard. These are young adult contemporary books. I've already read A Quiet Kind of Thunder and I've been meaning to pick up a copy for my shelves for a while now. And this one follows a selectively mute girl and a deaf boy who go to the same school and a romance starts up between them and I thought it was really sweet and really cute and it was interesting to learn more about both of those two disabilities even if it's not an own voices book and then Goodbye Perfect sounds like it's focused on best friends and yeah I'm always here for nice young adult contemporary books. I went to an event which was Pad Macmillan x Afro Sheenix which is a brilliant hair brand and they have very good hair care products and one of the books that I got there was Passing by Nella Larson in these Macmillan library editions. I love Passing, I've read it before, it's a fantastic book. I've recently watched the film adaption that's on Netflix which did it so very well. If you like the book I recommend you 
make sure to go and watch that film but yes passing is really good it's about these two women and one of them they're both black but one of them decides to pass as white while the other decides to live life as a black person it's a short classic you can breeze through it and it touches on so much so effectively and so well i picked up a middle grade for myself and that is king and the dragonflies by kason calendar this one is a middle grade book that looks at a boy who is grieving while also coming to terms with his sexuality and therefore I wanted to read it because it's focused on grief and grieving and lots of people have recommended it to me saying it'll be exactly up my alley and I fully believe them, cannot wait to try this. From Hannah who reads way too much, she sent me this book for like late Christmas slash New Year's gift which is really really nice of her to do so and that is Tender as the Flesh by Augustina Basterica and I've been meaning to read this one for so long. There are so many of my booktube friends who really love it and I think it's going to deal with concepts that are very very intriguing and interesting to me. It focuses on cannibalism becoming normalized because we're running out of animal meat and I know that it's got commentary to do with capitalism involved so it sounds very dark very horrifying lots of people said this one was quite chilling to them I'm very very intrigued from my good friend Dom from Dom Piers here for Christmas I got I am I am I am by Maggie O'Farrell I read Haven It last year and it was one of the best books I read that year it was absolutely amazing and I'm so excited to try a non-fiction book by Maggie O'Farrell because I'm interested to see how her writing style will translate. This one is about her seven brushes with death which is why the title is I am I am I am which is a Sylvia Plath quote. Ever since I saw the title Plath quote it intrigued me and now I know that I like this author's work so this is going to be a good one. I predict good things for this. From Gaia, from Gaia Athena for Christmas, she gave me Zami, a new spelling of my name by Audre Lorde. Audre Lorde is a queen. She is one of my favourite essayists. I think she writes so concisely, so to the point, perfunctory and also on such incredibly relevant and important topics back in her day but also still relevant to contemporary. And I haven't really read that many of her most famous works. I've read her poetry, I've read her essays, but I've never read Zami and I've heard really good things about Zami. So it's time for me to read it. We've got some review copies. So I was sent Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart. And this one is a book about first love, about gay love and about these two boys who are just facing through life. There's going to be lots of hardships their way. It's very literary. I've heard amazing things about this author. He recently won a prize for his debut novel. So I'm looking forward to reading Young Mungo. Okay, Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield is one of the books I'm so, so, so excited for this year and I've been really anticipating. I'm especially interested in this one because it gives me Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer vibes and I'm here for it so I should tell you what it's about. In this one we follow these two women who are married to each other and one of them goes on a deep sea mission and then she comes back and when she comes back there is something different about her, there's something strange and something must have happened on this deep sea mission as the two of them are trying to make their relationship work after her time away. It sounds creepy, it sounds strange, I am excited, oh and it's sapphic so oh, I'm so excited about this book. I picked up Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston, this is the third book in the Geekerella young adult contemporary series. I'm currently reading Geekerella and I'm really really enjoying it so when I saw that somebody was giving away an arc of the third book for free I thought I would just get it and pick it up because I know I'm going to want to continue the series. I don't have the second one so I'm missing a book in the middle but I'm looking forward to when I will be able to pick up this one. The first one is really really good so far. They are if you can tell by the title, fairy tale retellings that are contemporary romances and they take place at cons. The person was also giving away an arc of Burn by Patrick Ness. I haven't read my copy of Burn by Patrick Ness yet, but I still got 
the arc and that's all I want to say about it and it's, it's kind of beautiful. I love the flame theme that is going on with this, this book. I hope I love it because now I've got two copies but I am a Patrick Ness fan so do with that what you will. And then the last arc that person was giving away is Not So Pure The Simple by Lamar Giles which was on my TBR wishlist so once I saw they were giving it away I thought I would go and get this one and this is a young adult contemporary that has to do with this boy who fancies this girl and the girl is quite religious and is deciding that she's going to be saving herself for marriage and it just sounds so interesting because I don't really see that many young adult books which kind of tackle religion and sex in terms of not wanting to have sex until you're married. I just haven't come across that a lot in mainstream young adult contemporary books and I've heard it's very very good. The cover itself is an art piece alone. I'm intrigued. I'm so interested by this one. So then we have some Christmas presents from my family members for yeah for Christmas. So from Simone, my younger sister, I got War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, the beautiful cloth bound penguin edition which is the edition that I've chosen to collect most of my classics in that I really love and I read War and Peace last year. It was a journey. This book is huge, it's quite heavy to hold up but I'm so happy that I've got a very nice copy that I can add to my collection. The copy that I was reading it in I unhauled and I also unhauled my copy of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So this is a beautiful, again, penguin hardcover edition for my collection. This one I liked a bit less than War and Peace but it was still a really really solid classic. So glad I read it. Another massive one and thank you to my parents for getting me this for Christmas. I was sent one of my anticipated January releases by the publisher and that is Wahala by Nikki May and in this one it's following these three friends who are all mixed race who live in the UK and they've been friends for ages but there are some cracks in their friendship that are starting to show and all of these friends are very different. The cover is so striking to me and I've just been interested in this one ever since I heard about it. One of my anticipated releases, I don't really do anticipated releases videos but you'll hear about the books as I haul them in across the year so looking forward to this one. From Victoria, from what Victoria read I was sent a book to celebrate getting to 6k subscribers so thank you so much Victoria and she chose a very Victoria choice and that is The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. This is a book by the author of Room and I have read Room and I really really loved it. I don't read too many thrillers so the fact that that thriller just gripped me and didn't let me go has always stuck with me. And I saw that Victoria and Emma from Drinking By My Shelf, as well as several other booktubers I like, like Aoife from Words of Clover, really, really liked The Pull of the Stars. So since then, I've been interested in reading it for myself. The cover is also really beautiful. And I'm just intrigued to read something that's a bit of a different genre by Emma Donoghue. From my parents for Christmas, I got 4.50 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. Yay! I like Agatha Christie books, so looking forward to reading another Agatha Christie. It's a beautiful hardcover. I really like these editions that HarperCollins are slowly coming out with. Oh yes, this is from the Afro Scenic event that I talked about with Pam McMillan. I got a copy of the Office of Historical Corrections by Daniel Evans. This is a short story collection and I was sent a proof copy of this before it came out, so I've unhauled the proof so that I can read this finished edition of it. I've actually read the first short story in this collection and it was very good. I just need to continue and get to the rest of them. Then we have the rest of the hardcovers I got in the Waterstones sale. I'm not sure what the order is of the things that I'm showing you in this haul, but we're just going with it. So the f one of them that I got was The Cat Who Saved Book by Suzuki Natsukawa and this one was on my TBR wish list. I was really looking forward to reading it. It's about this talking cat who saves books. It sounds really sweet and it's got to do with first love. I've heard it's heartwarming, it's translated fiction and I just thought, let me get this book. I need to read this one in the Travelling Cat Chronicles. I think they're going to be going hand in hand with very cosy, heartwarming translated fiction books. Then I also got Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I've read Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson, which is her novel in verse, and it's autobiographical kind of novel in verse. And ever since then, I've been wanting to read something more by her, and I've heard that Red at the Bone is very, very good. In the Waterstone sale, it was about £3, so 
couldn't say no to this hardcover and I think I'm gonna race through this one. And the original reason that I went on to the sale was to pick up Betty Tiffany McDaniel, which was also like about three pounds in the sale, which is it's a big book, three pounds hardcover. Okay, I'll be there. So I had to pick this one up. I read Tiffany McDaniel's debut novel, which was The Summer That Melted Everything, when it came out for review and it's one of my favorite books. I absolutely loved it. And since then I've been wanting to pick up Betty, which is this like generational family saga book, which is quite big and hefty, but everybody seems to be loving it. I'm so glad to see Tiffany McDaniel getting a lot of attention and I will be reading it too. So many books, we're getting there. So, Cat on a Tin Roof by Tennessee Williams was the last book that Abby from Abby of Pernal got me for Christmas. So again, thank you Abby for spoiling me so much. This will be my third play by Tennessee Williams. I've loved all of them, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I don't know what it's about, and I still want to read it because I think Tennessee Williams is just the playwright for me. I was sent for a review, Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson, which is a Christmas book, which was absolutely wonderful. I rated it five stars, it became a new favorite, and I've already talked about this one in my December wrap up, so I'm not gonna talk about it extensively here, but it's about a family where there are three siblings and all of those siblings have certain expectations from Christmas, and there's a big secret, or several secrets, I should say, that come unearthed around Christmas time and there's just drama, family drama, sibling drama, romantic drama, major drama and it is absolutely wonderful and just such a fun book. I recommend it for reading at Christmas in the coming year. Get yourself a copy. From April's Unhaul, I hauled in the Weight of Water by Sarah Crossan and this one is a novel in verse. I've read two other books by Sarah Crossans that are novels in verse and both of them have been pretty good reads and I've really enjoyed them so when April was unhauling this I thought I would pick it up because I have been meaning to get to more of Sarah Crossans book. <laughs> okay so we've got some more review copies that I'm really anticipating. I've got so many books to read. So the first one is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gamont. And this one is looking into what happened when Agatha Christie went missing for a few days, which did happen in real life. And it's kind of the story about the Christie affair and what went on in that time. This arc is just so gorgeously put together. I love how it looks like a newspaper article and it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's told from the perspective of Agatha Christie's husband's mistress. I don't know, this sounds so exciting to me. The next one we have is Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer. And in this one, we're following this woman who has a terminal illness that's kind of in her body. And she's trying to grapple with this illness while also trying to continue participating as a regular member of her family and keep things the same but this illness is not going to let her ignore itself and it sounds like the illness becomes kind of sentient and part of the story and part of the perspective as well which sounds so intriguing to me it just mm, these this book is hitting all of the things that I typically like to read about and I think terminal illness is something that is really interesting to learn more about because in a way it's kind of grieving ahead of time and also grieving for yourself in the time that you've lost. I could talk about grief all day. From April's Unhaul, I also hauled in Behold the Dreamers by Imbolo Mumbwe and I've heard that this is a good one. That's all I really know. I've just heard good things about the author so I thought I would give it a shot. April could never finish it and I feel a bit bad because I actually gifted this to her but we've come full circle. Let's see if I can actually read it. I was sent one of my anticipated January releases by the publisher, and that is The Reactor by Nick Blackburn. And it's a book about grief and repair. Can you guess why I was interested in this one? So this is a non-fiction memoir about Nick Blackburn who has lost his father, I believe. And as he's reckoning with having lost his father in his own grief, he is exploring different ideas and concepts about grief in our world and how we portray it and how we channel through it and push through it. It just sounds so interesting. It's non-fiction. It's the type of book that I'm interested in. 
I am excited for it, even though it's kind of weird to say that I'm excited about a book. That's all about grief. I was sent two books by Book Break in their beautiful Christmas box of Christmas goodies and those two books were Midnight in the Snow by Karen Swan and also The Winter of Second Chances by Jenny Bayless and both of these take place in the dead of winter and they are contemporary romances I believe so I think it leads to a romance in both stories. I haven't heard of these authors before so they're quite new to me books but I'll be interested in trying them. I think they'll be like very nice, good, feel good books to read. But I'm very happy with this next stack of books that I have. And these are all by Kathy Cassidy. So I'm on a mission to collect some of the books that I read from my childhood that I would like to have in my collection. So I've actually already read all of these. And I read the Kathy Cassidy books a few years ago now, the Chocolate Box Girls series, and they were a reread for me, slash I had read the last two books in the series for the first time, and I really, really loved them, and it became one of my favorite middle grade series, and I just wanted to get the rest of her books that I read when I was younger. I've read all of them, and I really remember enjoying them when I was younger, and I just wanted them on my shelves in case I wanted to do a reread of the rest of her books because I really did enjoy reading The Chocolate Box Girls. So I'll run you through these titles. I had to get them secondhand because since I read them as a child, they've been given new covers and I didn't want those new covers. I wanted the ones that had the nostalgia for me. So we've got Indigo Blue. We've got Sunday Girl. I really like this one. We've got Lucky Star, which absolutely love that one. <laughs> we've got Ginger Snaps, which I thought was pretty good. Driftwood, which is my least favourite, but it's part of the ones I read when I was younger. Dizzy wasn't a favourite either, and then Scarlet, which I also really enjoyed. So I'm happy to have all of those, and I will not be getting any more Kathy Cassidy books. She has released other books, but they're ones that I either didn't read when I was younger, or just the synopses don't sound as interesting to me. So I'm kind of done with getting her books now, but I'm just glad to have all of these. In a secondhand shop I got Artemis Fowl de Rechisse Connexie and this is Artemis Fowl book two but in Dutch. I've been collecting this series in Dutch because I do want to reread it in Dutch at some point. Artemis Fowl is one of my favourite middle grade series. It's a middle grade fantasy series. The first book has a heist in it. It's got fairies, it's got magic, it's got beautiful character development and a really nice gang of friends. I really recommend the Artemis Fowl series and I'm just looking forward to reading them in Dutch. For review, I got a graphic novel and that is Messy Roots, a graphic memoir of a Wuhanese American by Laura Gao. And this is, yeah, what the title says. It's a memoir of her experiences as a Wuhanese American. And I am really into graphic novels, really into memoirs. Put the two together and you got a happy reader. So um, I don't know what that song was. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading this one. And I'm here to talk about the last Christmas present now, and that is from my parents. They gave me the graphic novel, My Name is Monster, which is huge, and it's by Emil Ferris. This is book one in the series. I haven't heard about book two, so I think this is the only one out at the moment. But this is quite an expensive graphic novel, so I never bought it for myself. So really big thank you to my parents for getting it for me. I think it's a murder mystery case, and the artwork looks really good and I've heard it's got kind of the concept where we are the monsters and looking at that which is one of my favourite concepts to read about. For review I was sent this big hardcover of 12 Caesars by Mary Beard and I've heard that Mary Beard is just such a good non-fiction writer so I've wanted to try some of her non-fiction writing for a while and this one is looking at 12 Caesars and it says here on the byline images of power from the ancient world to the modern so I think this will be very good I'm looking forward to trying something by Mary Beard for the first time We're on to the last two books so again from the Afrocenics event I don't know why they were so randomly scattered in this haul I got consumed by a Jababa and this one is looking at the need for collective change in terms of colonialism climate change and consumerism which are all very important things that we should be looking at reevaluating our connections to and how we are approaching them so this book sounds like it's going to very much 
help with that and I got this one signed at the event which was really nice she was so lovely and then last but not least from a Dutch literature writing thing <laughs> I got a review copy of Summer Brother by Yap Robin and ignore the damage on the cover I did that myself when I was removing a sticker I'm so sad about that but in this one it's translated from Dutch to English and we are following these two brothers and one of them has a disability and the other has been left to look after him for the summer even though that wasn't exactly his plan and it's about their relationship. That's the last book! So that was a huge haul but I'm very happy that I've already read some of these books so they're going straight onto my red shelves and as for the others I'm so excited for them all. If you sent me a Christmas present or an early birthday present thank you so much you were absolutely too kind. Please let me know in the comment section down below what is the most recent book you have bought, received, borrowed or acquired? I would love to hear about it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And don't you forget to hit that notification bell to, to be updated every time I have a new video. I'm losing the plot here. <laughs> you know what they say, onwards and upwards, excelsior.